guys, welcome to the Janus Project. Uh, before we get going, if you can hit that like button down below, what that does is that helps YouTube kind of connect people with me. Uh, also, leave a comment below. Let me know if you've read any of these books. Let me know what you think about them. Um, some of them are just so, so good. And uh, again, share this video. Let other people know about these. Uh, There's just some really, really good books I have to share with you today. Now, uh, I am reading a whole bunch of different books right now. Uh, I'm almost done with the, uh, the book Irreversible Damage. Uh, it is, I'm going to say it is a great book, uh, but it's one of those great books that makes you feel sick. And uh, so I'll explain that maybe in a, in a future video, but again, almost, almost there. If you have a daughter, especially a daughter in the public school, you need to read this book. Okay. Uh, I cannot express that more importantly. Transgenderism and all of that stuff is a craze, and I mean that in a psychological sense. It is going through our schools. Gender dysphoria is crazy, and if you think it will not happen to my daughter, read the book. You'll find out a lot of people who it went through like that actually thought they would never have that problem either. And so, do not be blind. We as Christians cannot afford to be blind in this situation. So that is one book I'm just gonna throw out there. I referenced it in a previous video. I'm almost done. I'm within a few hours of of, of finally finishing that book. Uh, very, very powerful book. Again, Irreversible Damage. Uh, go go read it. Uh, coming up very soon, uh, I have finished reading Ready Player Two. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, it's it's a, a book and a movie. Ready Player One, uh, written by Ernest Cline. Kind of a pop culture, just smorgasbord. Uh, I got some issues with the book. Obviously, if you go back to my first book review, I said I'm not going to insult your intelligence by telling you all the things that are wrong with the book, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know what's in it. Um, but if I miss some things or if I glossed over some things, uh, just because I do a review on it does not mean I I'm giving tacit approval to everything in it. Um, so, so just, just read with discernment and uh, I'm just going to tell you coming up very soon, ready player two. Uh, there is a lot of really, really good stuff in this book. Uh, very, very good plot, good ending, just, just good, good book. Um, but there is going to be a lot of stuff that you have to read this with discernment. I would not recommend this for teenagers. Uh, this is someone who has some discernment that, that you should be reading this. Um, but again, uh, don't, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give this to my teenage son. Uh, I realize my, it's going to be quite a few years before my son is a teenager, but, uh, just, just know that going into it. Um, another book that is, uh, definitely going to be worth your time. Uh, this is one that I'm working on. It's, it's, uh. It's just a beautiful book. It's a fun book. Uh, it is a book called Atlas Obscura. And uh, what it is, is it is kind of like a travel journal uh, that just pulls random places from all over the world that are just quirky and weird and cool. And uh, again, my wife got it for me for Christmas and uh, I found it early, so she let me have it early. And uh, so I'm gonna recommend it to you. Uh, it is not anything theological. It's not anything like a comic book. It's not anything pop culture. It is literally a travel book uh, but it is, it is absolutely awesome. And so I'm going to, I'm going to recommend that to your reading. And, uh, that is something else that it, I'm never going to actually finish it. Probably. I'm probably just going to keep looking through the pages. And, uh, so there you go, uh, to kind of round out the books that I'm working on. Uh, I am working on CS Lewis, uh, God in the dock. If you're more of an apologetics minded person, uh, that is certainly a, a review you're going to want to stay tuned for. I realize I've got all sorts of books on the shelf behind me that I still have yet to review. Uh, and I told you I would, so I will get to those uh, over the next few weeks, hopefully. Um, but C.S. Lewis, God in the Dock. Uh, what, what I heard someone say is they say what they try to do is read a new book and an old book. And I, I never really had gotten around to doing that. Uh, but I think I am going to start doing that now. Uh, because this is the first C.S. Lewis book that I've actually worked on reading all the way through. Uh, and it's just been very, very good. It, it reads like it was written today. The stuff they were going through back in the forties and fifties is the same exact stuff we're going through right now. And so be encouraged that the fight is not over. Uh, he, you know, recognizes the problem with the schools and all of that stuff. And, uh, so again, it's, it's worth the read. It's just a bunch of articles and speeches and other things by, uh, CS Lewis. And, uh, so I would recommend that to your reading that CS Lewis is God in the doc. And then the final collection of books, uh, I have, I'm going to have to move the camera back a little bit on this one. So pardon me if it falls over. Um, I did a review of one of his graphic novels, uh, weeks ago, maybe months ago. Uh, but Doug Tenaple, he's the, uh, creator of Earthworm Jim. Uh, he has been very, very active on, uh, political things and just other issues. He's part of several podcasts and other, 
other groups. And uh, so I've already kind of talked, go back to Tommy Soros Rex, you'll find it in the, uh, the archives of my channel. And uh, that is definitely worth uh, getting. But recently, I have expanded my collection to not all of his other graphic novels, he's written about 20 of them. Uh, but a good chunk of them. And so what I want to do is I want to do a rapid-fire uh, review of some of these, and then we'll, we'll take some time. Uh, he wrote a trilogy. It's called Newts. And uh, I, I had a tougher time getting into this one, to be completely honest. Uh, I, I love the art. I, I love the, just the quirkiness of it all. Um, but it, it, it took me a little bit to get into uh, until volume three, and then I, I actually started getting into it. Now, I don't know if that's because I was reading to my kids at the time, and it's just harder to read a graphic novel to your kids. Uh, I don't know what the deal was. Um, I, I came off of Tommy Soros Rex, which is a very high bar to meet. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't get into it quite as well. Uh, but again, I, I am almost done with these. Um, again, I recommend them. Go go get them. But they're just they're not as good, in my opinion, as Tommy Soros Rex. Uh, Tommy Soros Rex is one of those uh, books that it's just so good. Uh, one of the things I love, and, and, and I'll, I'll carry this through this, the other reviews when I do them, one of the things I love about Tenaple's work is he is not afraid to weave Christian themes in. He doesn't beat you over the head with them. Okay, but there are Christian themes in here. I love the fact that he doesn't make fun of adult figures. Um, the, yes, it focuses mainly on the kids. Uh, they're written for kids. They're scholastic. All right, but they deal with bullying and parent issues and all of that uh, in in uh, Bad Island, which is this one right here. Um, there is a boy who is having issues with his parents and he's going to run away and, uh, the, the parents know about it, but the whole thing is, is basically him coming to grips with trusting his parents. And in the same breath, his parents learning to trust him. And there's actually a really crucial moment, uh, that takes place toward the end of the story that, that hinges on that. And so it's just kind of some neat stuff where most popular culture, uh, you get your Disney's and your Nickelodeon's, etc. Parents are stupid and idiotic and... When you get to some of these books, they're not. Yeah, they're flawed and they make mistakes and they don't know what to do sometimes. And uh, I love it because, you know, it kind of brings up in Bad Island, the dad who, when the boy was born, he's like, I have no idea what I'm doing. And uh, confidentially, that's what all parents think, I'm sure. And uh, so again, Tommy Source Rex, I've already done a review on it. I'll ask you to go uh, check over there. Uh, but Bad Island, uh, I'll give you a quick plot summary of Bad Island. Uh, it's... it's uh, it's a family. They're going on a boating trip. They get in a really bad boating accident and they wash up on shore of this island. The island is populated by really strange creatures. And uh, it again, it, it has all of the very typical uh, Tenaple art style. Um, you know, it's that's one of the monsters. Um, and so basically you find out that there's more to the island than meets the eye. And uh, it, it, it's pretty neat. I don't want to spoil it for you. I'll, I'll do that in the review. Uh, but again, pick it up. It, it, it presents family life in a very cool way. Um, you just got all the quirky characters and kind of the, the, the little the girl has a snake that's her pet. And she keeps like throwing it on her dad and making her dad kiss it by accident. You know, like it, it's just it's just funny. And uh, so that all throughout the story, those type of things happen. And uh, so it, it's fun. Uh, I especially love the part where, you know, she finds this little creature and uh, she adopts it for a while, and then her brother ends up drop kicking it, and so I, I especially thought that was fun. And uh, so here's the, uh, here's the frame, um, right here. He's drop kicking the little creature, and uh, you're like, oh, that's terrible. Yeah, but it gets its revenge. And uh, so it's just, if if you want a quirky, fun story with really, really pretty art and just well done. Uh, I would recommend those to your reading. Um, the other one uh, I just finished as well uh, is Cardboard. Uh, cardboard is mm, so good. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to use I'm going to use Tommy Source Rex as a comparison. Okay, Tommy Source Rex deals with bullying and it deals with forgiveness. I've, I've already kind of covered that in the review. Very powerful. The thing that happens toward the end of this book happens in the middle of this book. Where, you know, you have a kid come and he apologizes and he wants to be forgiven and all of that. Uh, only in this one, it's a ruse. And so if you put these two books together, you're going to get kind of a realistic perspective. Because there are times where kids are going to say, I'm sorry, forgive me. But they're really just trying to take advantage of you again. And then at the end, you know, there's some more stuff that goes on. But the basic premise of cardboard, um, just quirky. I, I, I'm a writer myself. Uh, I have pulled some really strange ideas out of the nether. I wouldn't have thought of this. And uh, so that, I guess that's why he's 
well known and successful and uh i've sold 36 copies of my book uh but what happens in the cardboard is that the dad is so poor that he cannot afford to buy his son a gift so he buys him uh from this weird old dude on the street he buys him like an 87 cent box of cardboard and he's like well let's let's build something together and so the the son is good natured about it and they build this little cardboard boxer well it turns out the cardboard is either magic or alien or uh high tech you're not really told how it's kind of a funny part in the middle of the story uh but what you get is the cardboard actually comes to life and so their little boxer guy comes to life um long story short the bad kid gets a hold of some of the cardboard too and starts making his own things and all of it spirals out of control until there's a giant cardboard city underneath the town that they have to combat, you know, with all the monsters and stuff that appear out of cardboard. And uh, so it's just, it's just fun. It's again, just beautiful art, uh, beautiful colors and illustrations. Um, my boys love reading this with me. Um, they just, I mean, we worked our way through Bad Island tonight or at least part of it. Uh, we were working our way through uh, a little bit of cardboard. My my two year old grabbed Tommy Source Rex and brought it to his mom to read. I started reading Ghostopolis with one of them, which this is a little more dark, but uh, but those are some of the books I've been working through. I'd highly recommend them. Um, the cool thing is, if you go to his website, um, and I'll, I'll link that in the description below, you can actually get some of these uh, signed and, and other things. And so. Uh, again, just some signatures there. And uh, so a few of these are going to be going on my shelf where, regrettably, my boys won't get them quite as often uh, because they're mine. And uh, so those are some of the books I've been working through. And uh, I'll let you guys know as I finish them up and I'll, I'll do more of a formal review. But I wanted to touch base, let you guys know a little bit about what's going on. And uh, stay tuned for the channel. Uh, again, very soon we are going to be doing a review of Ready Player Two, uh, which I did. I, I, I very much enjoyed. Uh, but I want to let you know uh, a little bit of that stuff going on. Guys, thank you for tuning in. And uh, that's uh, a little bit of what I've been reading. And uh, I thank you for tuning in to the Janus Project. Please remember to like this video, subscribe for more content, hit that bell icon so you're actually told when I post. And uh, leave a comment below. Let me know if you've read any of these. And uh, let me know what you thought about them. And uh, I will catch you guys next time.